okay yeah so yeah are we good can you hear me ron i can loud and clear okay cool um uh, yep uh, so first of all thank you everybody for joining us uh, i am arpita and i'm from sisne for arts and entertainment and uh, i'm in conversation with ronald fernandez uh, who is a pcm expert and the first certified pcm uh, expert from our country he's the ceo of metamorphosis uh, ron is a leadership and a life coach who will be talking to us today about psychology and dealing with covid-19 so the last few uh, weeks uh, the only words or the only phrases that we seem to hear are social distancing flatten the curve stay home stay safe uh, we all know that we are in the middle of a pandemic uh with countries and cities shutting down uh most of us it's it's actually overwhelming and uh, uh most of us are scared you know we, because we don't know what is going to happen next so this kind of an atmosphere can definitely take an emotional toll on all of us and uh, especially for people who are already dealing with uh, existing anxiety and disorders but we believe that we are not powerless we can do something about it and i'm sure our today's guest ron uh, fernandez will definitely agree with what i say and the best part is he's going to guide us through it so before we get started uh, let me a brief introduction about ron once again uh, ron is a pcm process communication model expert he is a cognitive behavior therapist he is a leadership and life coach uh he's a brain based learning evangelist and an nlp master practitioner uh again to reiterate he's the first in india to be certified as a pcm expert he's currently pursuing his phd in psychology with a specialization in organizational behavior so let's get started and uh, ron can we begin with a small explanation from you about you know what the session is going to be about all right so while psychology itself is a vast ocean and we may not be able to tap into all aspects of psychology there yep, are lots yep. of independent studies uh, and amazing research that has been conducted under the realm of psychology that can help today one mm-hmm. such amazing methodology that we're going to talk about today is the process communication model right okay. so pcm uh, was designed and developed by dr tabi kahler in the 60s mm-hmm. and 70s um, k a h l e r and there's a lot of information about process communication model and dr kala so if you put in okay. pcm and type in kala the internet will send you a lot of information or give you a lot of information about what pcm is right um, mm-hmm. since the call is limited i want to dive straight into how we can understand a few things about pcm and use that to our advantage in dealing with covid-19 and the lockdown especially right yeah Mind yeah you, pcm itself is a very very broad diverse subject has a, amazing nuances to it um so we may consider this as part 1 in what might be a long series of understanding personality so we're going to try and understand personality itself today we're going to try uh-huh. and understand what is our base personality how do we process the world how do we manifest our emotions actions language behavior in the world that we live in interesting and we're going to try and see if i can use that information to understand and make sense of what i can do in a state of anxiety or in a state of distress i want to go back yeah. before i start to something you said um mm-hmm. if somebody already has a predisposition to anxiety or somebody already is under a state of distress and is getting therapy or medication for it uh huh this may not be the session that's going to help you a lot because you will have to continue seeing your therapist so that's therapist. why people like me cognitive behavior therapists um can help you there but for all okay. those who are mildly anxious about the situation for all those who mm-hmm. are technically um or rather medically sane who are not taking any therapy or medication for their anxiety this session okay. will give you some insights on what you can do uh, in mm-hmm. this lockdown right yeah. so yes yes let me get started so dr kala came up with this amazing concept he first designed the process therapy model where mm-hmm. while he was working with mental patients he found that um, almost every mental patient that he came across had predictability in their behavior oh. in their actions and language right Okay. So he started observing this predictability and he came up with an interesting observation that even if somebody was medically under care for psychiatric and psychosomatic illnesses he found mm-hmm. that they had predictable styles of behavior language actions and patterns to them 
the study okay. things and he came up with solutions and the process therapy model is still used in the world of clinical psychology right uh huh a lot of his patients got better and a lot of people understood the power of process therapy model and mm -hmm. dr kala won the eric bern award it was a scientific discovery one of the best in the time that he got it so in 1977 he won an award for his process therapy model okay a lot of people okay. came and asked him to convert that to you know in the benefit of lay people so how can people benefit from that so dr kala oh. worked on that in 1982 launched the process communication model where he said you don't have to be uh, you don't have to have any medical implications to understand pcm and then they started um, training people in pcm okay. i found out through a german friend of mine uh, in the early 2000s mid 2000s and then i eventually managed to go there about 5 6 years ago get myself certified in pcm it's been a good journey mm -hmm. so let me dive okay. straight into pcm now okay basically okay. dr kala found something interesting about human personality mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry now to understand pcm i'm going to ask you to work with me and imagine or i'm going to give you an analogy i'm going to liken pcm to an analogy imagine okay. that you you live in a six floor house right mm -hmm. an apartment that has six floors all of us live on the base floor all the time the ground floor right and we are very comfortable living in that ground floor but we also have five floors above the ground floor right and while some of us go up to the sixth floor and come back often some of us don't really go more than two or three floors in the day so mm -hmm. for most of us we just access two or three floors in that sixth floor condo that we have uh -huh. <laughs> right so he like in pc under that now dr kala found that most of us have six different parts of personality all of us have these six but we have some of them have developed more in our life thanks to the environment we were born in or the little um the parenting styles of our parents or uh, the exposure of the environments we were put in right mm -hmm. he found that up to the age of 6 or 7 most of these floors have been designed and developed and then we go through life just confirming and developing each floor right okay. let me get straight into those floors <clears throat> uh am i making sense so far arpita yeah yeah you are right? so are these uh, six different types manifested even before the age of 6 but it would be hard to explain that question because we all have those types right okay okay i'm sure we are men i'm sure if you look at your children for example you have two young kids right uh huh kids are a result of the environment they're born in so for example they're picking up on your personality they're picking up on the personality of their parents their grandparents the environment they're in the people they deal with right okay so what do we begin exposed to before the age of 7 and if it's consistent <clears throat> okay then kids pick it up and i'll explain that when i talk about my kids and how they picked up my personality yeah, and yeah. some aspects of my wife to faculty and get their points across right thinkers are logical mm -hmm. now if you look at thinkers lifestyle and, and we have a lot of thinkers in the world for example thinkers manifest their behaviors by keeping a neat house everything has a place the keys have to go in in this spot now if you're a mm -hmm. thinker housewife or a thinker parent then there is a strict regimen to the way you like your kitchen okay the, cupboard, the dishes have to go in a particular way you know there is a process to everything that you do right okay. and okay. i'm sure my wife is listening in on this call but i'm, <laughs> I'm sure she'll understand my wife has a good think of floor and so she has a process to it so all her vessels after all her dishes and stuff that she uses in the kitchen have to go in a particular order in a particular place you know she has a pattern to the way she likes her kitchen she has a pattern to the way she cooks her food she has a pattern to the way she she settles the house okay right? so yeah. the thinkers have this need for data and information they ask a lot of questions and they're basically the floor of logic okay mm -hmm. right okay so that's thinker we'll get back to that the second sure. personality type that dr kala found is called the persister persister uh huh now the persister looks at the world through the eyes of opinions and values okay for them if they believe that something has to be done then mm -hmm. they're unshakable in that belief so they look at the world through their own little belief system um yeah. and so you see a lot of people believe that no uh, hard work is important and you have to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do this the mornings are the best time to exercise i'm i'm just thinking of random sentences that they might come oh. up with, right you know mm -hmm. um people should always experience pain before they get happiness or i'm i'm just going yeah. to think of all the persisters in my life and the kind of opinions they've given me now persisters mm -hmm. have this amazing need to live their life through their own convictions and belief systems 
Like, okay. So they mm-hmm. will have an opinion about everything, and it's not that they want to be rude, but they're very, very sure about what they want to say. Right? Okay. So, yeah. for example, we were working uh, in Hyderabad during peak times. If you have people stuck in traffic, then you'll have a persister come up and say, "All the traffic jams in this city are caused by auto walas and two wheelers." Right? Yeah. They may not have data to bank it, but it's based on their opinion because it's been yeah. validated to their belief system that they've been stuck by a lot of auto walas and a lot of two wheelers, and and that comes out from there. So we have the thinkers who look at the world through logic. We have uh-huh. the sisters who look at the world through opinions and value systems. Okay. Right? Yeah. The third personality type, Dr. Kala found, is called a harmonizer. The harmonizer mm-hmm. looks at looks at the world through the eyes of emotions and feelings. <clears throat> Okay. Uh-huh. Then everything is about relationships and people and and compassion and being nice, right? So mm-hmm. harmonizers look at the world only through the eyes of the people that they're living with and how can I make life easier for them? And it's also about uh, I want people to like me back. So they tend to speak lots a lot more softer voices, much more compassion. The tonality mm-hmm. is much more prominent, much more uh, in use at least. right so harmonizers look at the world through the eyes of emotions and feelings they process through that now mm-hmm. mind you everybody else also has these flaws but we're talking about the floor that is the base floor and that's the most developed so we're just looking at the six okay so think first okay. look at the world through logic persisters mm-hmm. through opinions <clears throat> harmonizers through emotions and feelings uh-huh. the fourth personality type we're looking at is called the imaginer imaginer okay right the, The imaginer looks at the world through the eyes of reflection. Reflection. The imaginers are the yes, reflection. So they they look at the external world and they internalize all of that, and they have these amazing dialogues inside themselves, mm-hmm. right? So from mm-hmm. the outside, they're very calm. They only reply to the questions asked, uh, smaller sentences, one-word answers. Very calm and composed. They like silence. They like to be with themselves. So they have this great need to enjoy solitude. Right, but they're very uh-huh. imaginative, reflective. So they like they like the stimulus to be given to them, and then they like to go find their own space and find the answers and solutions to their life. Right. Interesting. Um, yeah. So they like silence. So thinkers, logic, persisters, values and opinion, harmonizers, emotions and feelings, and imaginers, silence and reflection. Silence and reflection. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. The fifth floor we're going to look at now is called the promoter. Mm-hmm. Right. the promoters look at the world through action and excitement okay. what needs to be tell me now tell me now what is the most exciting thing i can do with my time now these are the kind of guys who cannot sit quietly they they have to do something right and it okay. doesn't matter if it's small or large as long as it's exciting enough for them they have to keep doing something now um i know i could give you better examples but yes james bond is a fantastic example of a promoter as a character right so the uh fits the role of a promoter really really well because James Bond is the kind of guy who's constantly doing something right if he's not killing people yeah. he's in a car chase or he's he's with these beautiful women or he's doing something all the time right mm-hmm. so promoters have this great need to be engaged in excitement and action and keep doing something all the time right okay and the last floor is the rebel floor rebel mm-hmm. right so rebels like to look at the world through humor and fun for them everything is about fun you know uh the verbiage is different the energy in their voice is different they're like oh my god did you see that oh that is so awesome man that's so crazy oh my god i completely dig this oh that's so cool macha they have all of this language right now okay and that's why sometimes when we see young people talk like that or we see even older people talk like that you mm-hmm. can imagine that the flows that don't have a high need for the rebel floor or the the personalities that do not have a floor cannot see and understand why people have a quota of humor in the world uh huh uh huh we need them too so very okay. quickly mm-hmm. the thinkers look at the world through logic mm mm-hmm. persisters look at the world through their opinions and their belief system uh huh harmonizers look at the world through their emotions and feelings okay imaginers look at the world through silence and reflection internal reflection right mm-hmm. the promoters look at the world through excitement and action Mm-hmm. and the rebels look at the world through the eyes of humor and fun okay uh ron before right. we proceed can mm-hmm. can can there be a combination of these in one person that's it now you're saying uh, everything you're actually preempting my question so good okay. yes, all of us all of us have a combination of these six 
The okay. base floor is the one that is the most developed. So, for example, my base floor is the harmonizer floor. I process the world through emotions and feelings first. And that's okay. the best floor, or that's the floor I go to all the time when I'm talking to people. Right? That's uh -huh. my most naturally preferred floor. But yes, I do have the other five in some combination. And depending oh. on how well each floor is developed, it becomes easy for me to go to that floor or use that personality type comfortably. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and it's quite interesting yeah. too. Yeah. Right. So let me let me quickly put this in an example. For example, my two strongest floors. Uh huh. Before I say this, because I know my wife is listening. Before I say this, um, there is no floor that is really good or anything. We have a combination. Each person is unique, and all the floors are okay. Right? Mm -hmm. and whatever combination we have in life is fantastic right we just have to become aware of that fact and learn to utilize these flows really well to our advantage and benefit right? yeah for example yeah. now my base floor is harmonizer and i also have a decent rebel floor right above the harmonizer floor so you can imagine my need is to communicate with the world and see the world through emotions and feelings mm -hmm. but i also have this high need for humor and fun right? okay Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick to two floors now. So two of my best developed floors going bottom up. I look at the world through the harmonizer floor and also have a highly developed rebel floor. My wife, on the other hand, uh -huh. has a fantastic imaginer base floor. She looks at the world through the eyes of silence and reflection. Okay. And her immediate floor above the imaginer floor is the thinker floor. So she's got silence, reflection, and amazing logic and fantastic structure to her life. Now, okay between mm -hmm. my wife and me there are four floors that my kids get access to so you would see my children who are 9 and 6 when they oh. with their mom they understand her need for silence and structure so they play games that are silent oriented they would play uno or a card game or or something that is more quiet mm -hmm. right? or something mm -hmm. on their own risk of of getting killed later today right so between my wife and i my kids get access to four well developed floors okay uh, incidentally mm -hmm. my wife strongest floors are my least developed floors so the least developed floor in my personality structure is the floor of the imaginer okay and, and when i look back at my life my mom used to run a school for uh, for the poor people around my area so i grew up with noise all the time uh huh, uh -huh. and i was surrounded by children there was never a need for silence in my life I, in fact there was no silence in my life while i was growing up Right? Okay. So as I kept growing through life, I was constantly surrounded by friends or family, and even now, it took me a long time to get used to the idea of being silent and reflecting quietly with my own space. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So the imaginer floor is my least developed floor. I don't really spend a lot of time there, but thanks mm -hmm. to my fantastic wife, who's an imaginer, I think over the last fifteen, twenty years that I've known her, I've grown to accept that floor as something that is something that's unique to her, and I'm okay with that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. In fact, in fact, some of our our friends also tease us. They say, "Man, you and your wife don't you guys talk a lot?" I said, "No, actually, we talk quite a bit." But thanks to my wife being an imaginer, uh huh. I um, I have a feeling this call is not going well for me after this call is done. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you see, this is the need for me as a rebel personality to crack a joke in between, get some humor yeah. in, right? Yeah. To take myself yeah. a little less seriously. Um, mm -hmm. just like everybody else i know that everybody is a good professional and i'm really good at my job but i find mm -hmm. myself increasingly hu using humor in everything i do and i think it's uh, it's part of my personality to constantly be uh, a little less serious use humor and jokes yeah, and, think, and uh, use the uh, aspects of my personality yeah a little humor is required a little humor is always good right um, yeah I hope the audience is doing really well guys let us know with a thumbs up or anything if you guys are doing okay so far for I move in yeah so and, and give us a little more information <clears throat> so any time you have any questions feel free to keep sending them in uh, ron will take the questions then or probably after his talk you know based on uh, the question so yeah so do keep sending in your questions and uh, a thumbs up if you've uh, been following us so far <laughs> okay harini sent she has suicidal tendency i agree harini you you definitely are that person who has suicidal tendencies okay there's nothing i can do to help you you are beyond the realm of human personality so so what maybe... floor is that on john i'm just kidding <laughs> sorry what floor is that what, on what floor uh, is that on 
I think since we know Harini and Harini knows me, I think she's just being playful, and that's probably coming from her level floor or level floor. Okay. Level floor too. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. Okay. I've got three tips, uh, especially aligned with the COVID nineteen, especially. Right. I'm going okay. to give you the three tips first, at least the broad segments, and then we'll slowly start working backwards. The first uh-huh. thing I want to give everybody here is get your psychological needs met. Okay. And let me explain that. Okay, that's the first tip, and I'll get there. So the first tip I want to say is get your psychological needs met. Second is okay. use a three-prong focus approach in your life. Right. Okay. And we we'll, and we'll get there. And the third tip is do a little bit of everything. especially now since you're indoors okay, okay. i'll explain that so first big broad tip is get your psychological needs met two use a three prong focus approach and three okay. do a little bit of everything in your life and we'll talk about that yeah okay yeah right so get your psychological needs met now thinkers the ones who look at the world through the eyes of logic right mm-hmm. have this need for structure and data and things need to have a place sorry everything has to be in place Okay. And a lot of people are here. Um uh, thinkers your psychological need is to be recognized for the work you do and mm-hmm. time structure. You need your time to be appreciated and you re- you want people to recognize you for how well you manage your time and the job you do in the time you have. Is that okay. Sense? Right? Yeah. So when I say get your needs met for a thinker, if you have a thinker spouse or even if you know you if you have a base style of thinking and if you are prone to being logical and structured the thing mm-hmm. you want to say yourself to yourself is okay if you know somebody you could say i appreciate the way you manage time or good job mm-hmm. you really manage your time really well you you have a process there are, there are fantastic steps to the way you do everything and i appreciate the way you can structure your life and use data and time really really well think i yeah. like to hear this kind of praise uh-huh right? okay so you have to praise their ability to manage time really well and do their jobs really well in that time limit so recognition of their work and the recognition of their ability to manage time that's their psychological thing that's okay right? yeah now our persistence who look at the world through their value systems and belief systems right mm-hmm. they have an opinion about everything and most often it's fantastic right okay mm mm-hmm. but sisters have the psychological need of being recognized for the work they do but they want to share more about their convictions and belief system so if you're talking to a, a sister you uh-huh. can probably say i appreciate your values and i appreciate your belief system and i appreciate the way you can express yourself fantastically through the eyes of your belief system and your values your commitment see a uh, persistence value trust a lot Okay, so it it kind of sounds a little complicated, Ron. Could you just give a small example for us, like you gave uh, for uh, thinkers? Right. For example, um, I think you have a good persistent floor. If I was talking to somebody who is a persister, the uh-huh. persisters are going to express their opinions quite a bit. I have a friend of mine who's joined in. Uh, Shailu is a strong persister. Sorry, Shailu, I'm taking your name. Um, but you know, he always expresses himself in the way of his opinions. Okay. Right? And my friend Chalu we went to school together and if he has a strong opinion he's not worried if he's facing 20 people or he's alone. Uh-huh. His opinions are true to him. His value system is true for him, right? So if I mm-hmm. had to give him praise I'd probably praise him for the conviction of his beliefs and say hey I appreciate the value system you have I appreciate your commitment to your own logic. I appreciate your opinions and I appreciate how you apply yourself in giving your opinions fearlessly. Mhm mhm. Right, so persistors look at the world through the eyes of their belief systems, and we want to thank them and appreciate them for the values they bring to their belief system. Right, okay. many persistors are also game changers because when they believe in something really strongly, nothing can deter them or stop them from from doing what they want. Right, they're driven by their value system, so you want to yeah. appreciate them. Right, mm-hmm. good so far. So thinkers' recognition of the work they do and their application of time. Mm-hmm. Sisters, since they look at the world through their value system and belief, you appreciate their ability to handle their work really well. But you also want to thank them for their commitment and their trust and their values. They bring in okay. a lot of values, right? Now, uh-huh. harmonizers. Why don't you take a guess, Arpita? If we said harmonizers look at the world through emotions and feelings, what do you think their psychological needs are? I think just uh, identifying and acknowledging their feelings does it help? Pretty close. 
Right. So harmonizers have this great need to be told that they are, or rather to be appreciated for the person they are. So they want a lot of recognition for their personality and the person they are. They want to be told that they are compassionate, they are sensitive, they are warm. You want to use those words for them. You want to use that kind of tone with the harmonizer and say, hey, um, you are such a kind person. You are such a caring person. And not talk about the jobs that they do, but talk about the people that they are. And say, hey. Right. Yeah. So yeah. since I'm a harmonizer, right? And and people um, would say, Ron, you are a, a caring, sensitive person and you focus and you give your energy and the best of your personality in the way you deal with people. That actually gets my psychological battery charged rather than saying, Ron, you've done a good job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah, harmonizers, yeah. for them, their needs are met. Their psychological needs are met when you talk to them about the good things they have done as people. So don't just focus on the task they did, but make it about them, right? But you okay. want to be genuine. Okay, with everybody, you want to give them genuine appreciation for their psychological needs. Mm-hmm. The fourth personality type we spoke about, the imaginers. Now, okay. if imaginers look at the world through silence and reflection, what do you think is their biggest psychological need? Giving them their space in this lockdown, especially when uh, Bingo. they can't even step out of the house. Bingo. Mm-hmm. So the psychological need of the imaginer is to have time for himself or herself. And the best thing that you could give them is also give them, even in conversation, you speak to them and say, hey, take, take a minute and tell me later what you think about this. Don't ask them for a solution or an answer now. Tell me now. Because imaginers need time to reflect. So the best thing that you can do to them is give them that silence and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I always found that when you reflect and come back, you come up with great solutions. So why don't you take some time and give them a little time of silence or solitude and they'll come back with fantastic answers. Right? Okay. So if you have people who are quiet in the house, you want to leave them alone for some time and give them that kind of solitude and that will give them their needs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Now, mm-hmm. the fifth floor we spoke about is the promoter floor. Yeah. Yeah. If the promoter floor looks at the world through the eyes of action and excitement and constantly doing something, right? Mm-hmm. what kind of psychological need can you anticipate they will have? They need to be involved or they should be doing something or the other thing. Right. That's good. You're, yeah. You're semi, you're right. semi-qualified. Yeah. You're semi-qualified, okay? So post the session, I'm going to tell my husband, you know, you are a promoter. Why don't you sweep the house? Why don't you mop the house? Uh, hey, whatever, whoever the beautiful <laughs> husband is, that is not my suggestion, okay? That's all Arpita there. Okay? Please, Arpita, please don't put your gun on my shoulders and shoot your husband and say, Ron said this. <laughs> Okay. okay. We, so, a lot of questions uh, coming in, but we'll get there. Let me quickly move on to this. Yeah. Uh, so the one promoters second. look at the world. Ron, Ron, just a second. Uh, yeah. So we've got one question from reluctant fashionist. How do we navigate the six floors of mental peace? Uh, you know, just give Ron some time. He's getting there. So he's actually in the middle of explaining uh, how psychological needs of different personalities are met. It's not that we haven't seen your question, but just give us a little more time before we can answer it. Ron no, can no, answer. Really. We'll definitely yeah. come to that question. Reluctant cool. fashionist. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> Sorry to have interrupted you. And yeah, no please worries. be talking no about worries. the so the psychological need of the imaginer, of the promoter, is to have excitement and do something that is constantly exciting them. And there's uh-huh. a term for this called incidents. So they like a lot of incidents in their life. You know, a psychological uh-huh. definition of that is to constantly have something valuable or purpose-driven for them to do. Right? Okay. They're not really interested in something small. They have to do something big, like James Bond saving the world. It's always something amazing, right? Death yeah. And stunts. And so promoters like something exciting. So as long as they have a plan and they're doing something meaningful with their time, then they're okay. Right? Mm-hmm. They need to be doing something exciting, something challenging, something that stimulates them. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The last floor, the rebel floor, they look at the world through the eyes of humor and fun. Fun. Okay. And, and what do you think is their biggest need? Yeah, so we call this contact. In PCM, it's called contact. Uh, rebels don't do well alone, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you if you have a lot of jokes that you want to crack and if you want to have fun, then you need somebody, right? Yeah, right? yeah. So rebels yeah. need a lot of a lot of playful contact. So people need to call them or talk to them. And the best thing you could do is uh, get on calls with rebels. If you have friends who constantly are the humorous, playful kind, the prankster kind, then you want to call them and say. Talk to them in that high energy tone and say, what are you doing? Hey, tell me a joke and what else is happening? And you want to keep them engaged in that. 
right? Yeah. They get a yeah. lot of excitement that too. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my kids, my second son is a is a fantastic bass rebel. He, his bass mm -hmm. floor is the rebel floor right now. And every time mm -hmm. he'll come and say, Dad, I'm getting bored. As long as he's not getting playful contact, he'll come and say, Dad, I'm getting bored. And then we have this amazing uh, idiom, a maxim at home. So I keep telling them and they keep repeating it. I say, you know, who gets bored? And, I, and he will reluctantly say, I know only boring people get bored, but I need <laughs> you to come play with me. Right? Sweet. And every, yeah. time, every time I'm dealing with Tristan, my second son, I can see that his need for playful contact is so high that uh -huh. we need to constantly spend time with him. Yeah. Okay. So much so that as a rebel, even when he's around people, he wants to be the one talking the most. Uh, he wants to be the one cracking the jokes. He wants to be the one everybody listens to. So that's the need of the rebel. And you can see a lot of this behavior even in adolescents and, you know, prepubescent teenagers and teenagers and adolescents and young people who have this need. I want to be the one talking. I should be the funny guy. People should like me for and call me this crazy, amazing, funny person. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. you, you want to you want to appreciate that talent and say, hey, you're such a crazy guy, man. Oh my God, you're such a crazy, fantastic guy. Having you around is like having the rainbow in my life, and you bring so much laughter. Yeah. You want to use that kind of energy and and enthusiasm with kids, right? Uh, this reminds me. At one time, I was teaching at uh, the ELTC and ECLT. You know, the English Language Training Center at Usmania University, right? Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. And there was this teacher who came and told me that they had a problem child called Sridhar in class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was this guy. And Sridhar had this amazing ability to take pieces of chalk and throw it on the teacher when they were teaching. So while I was doing this evening class with him, he'd constantly go on throwing chalk pieces. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was a good kid. It wasn't that he was a bad kid. And he wasn't, he wasn't big or strong or anything like that. He wasn't from a rich family or nothing. He just had a high need for this playful contact and he wasn't getting those needs positively met so he was trying to get them negatively met which is another secret right so mm -hmm. as long as our needs are met positively we're okay we if we don't get our needs positively met we start seeking them out negatively and we'll do anything to get that attention right uh -huh. and that's why yeah. we see a lot of rebel behavior from children and young people in schools and colleges because they probably don't know that they're not getting their needs met and they'll do anything to get that kind of attention from people around them. right yeah so going back yeah. to Sridhar, uh, when the professor complained, I said, okay, sir, I'll deal with it. And I remember before starting the class, I just stood at the entrance of class. And while Sridhar and the others were walking in, I just started giving out high fives to all the students walking in. You know? Oh. So uh -huh. Sridhar gives me a high five and gives me one of those looks saying, okay, what's happening here? And we started joking a lot more in class. And, you know, once Sridhar found that there is a bridge and there is a little peace offering I'm, I'm extending out to him. He came mm -hmm. back to me after class and said, sir, I'm sorry if I'm disrupting your class a lot more. And I just laughed it off and said, no, Sridhar, thankfully, the lesson is so boring. You're making it actually fun. Mm -hmm. But Sridhar lives in Australia right now. He's doing very, very well for himself. Okay. That's and he's, he's one of those success stories that I will talk about. And he hasn't changed a bit. Even now, he has this great need to be playful. Uh -huh. and, uh, you know, take himself not so seriously and do all of that. Right? So, yeah. Coming back to the tips, get your so, psychological needs met. So, uh, Ron, let me just interrupt you briefly here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, from everything you've said, I think all this is good to understand and deal with. You know, probably people in our family. You know, now we can uh, we can actually understand if there are persons. Okay, this is my daughter. Uh, so you know. We can understand that, you know, if our family members or people in our house right now are persisters, harmonizers. And uh, so this is good to deal, understand them and deal with them. But what about me? How, I mean, and I'm talking for everybody. How do we understand, how do we, how are our psychological needs met? Okay, good. So first of all, based on the six type of personality I gave you, right? The first thing that you want to know is what seems to be the type that you feel most confident and comfortable in? Which floor do you think is your base floor? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm definitely not an imaginer, but uh, a combination. Try the persister, combination, Try the persister you know. floor first. Look at, look at what I said about the persister floor. Persister? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh -huh. we've been having conversations, you and I, the last couple of days. You definitely uh -huh. have uh, your opinions to say about things and all that. Yeah, you're definitely not a thinker floor because if you were a thinker floor, you wouldn't get your child on this call. You'd probably have structure around it, you know. So there is, 
there is a good rebel floor in you which is okay with being spontaneous yeah what you're doing is actually good rebel behavior yeah okay. rebels can be very spontaneous and take things a little uh, less seriously be okay be a little uh. creative with the situation you know you just brought your daughter in and said hey hi this is my daughter yeah. you know so this is yeah. bigger rebel than i yeah so. uh, no wonder I, i wonder where she gets it from the the apple doesn't <laughs> fall far from the tree right yeah 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 <laughs> right. yeah so, so radha, radha is saying somebody is saying that she feels she is a promoter floor that's good yeah because we don't yeah. understand one thing about the six layers of the floors okay and uh-huh. even if we can't identify the structure of all the six floors the one uh-huh. thing i'd like each one of us to do to take away only since i said this is our first call and hopefully we'll have many more so many more right? we should identify your base floor and if you Here's a secret to identifying your base floor. You communicate from your base floor all the time. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. So if you're expressing a lot of your opinions like facts, or if you're constantly talking about your opinions, then your base floor is the persistent floor. Okay. Right? Uh huh. Now, uh, across North America, they have a lot of data on PCM. I've been mm-hmm. using PCM only in the last four or five, maybe six years in India now. Um, okay. We've we've done some collation of data across all the leaders i have access to about 600 profiles that i've done in the last few years in india uh-huh. right we are seeing a lot of people at least between the 28 to 40 a lot of them are thinker persisters a lot of males are thinker persisters not a lot of them but maybe 50 60% of all the people i've seen in those 600 odd profiles happen to be thinker persister base yeah there's <laughs> a little rebel that's okay yeah um, we have we also have a lot of flaws we find a lot of harmonizers not necessarily men but we have a large chunk about 50 60% of all the women we see in india between the ages 28 to 40 tend to be harmonizers harmonizers in the limited in the limited number of profiles i've seen so far at least the ones we've mapped right okay so okay we've had but largely we're seeing a lot of the corporate world unfortunately just think about it most of our corporate structure is constantly seeking out thinkers and persisters we want people to be logical we want them to be doing a good job with their time yeah mm-hmm. we want them to be dedicated observant and all of that so we're okay um, we don't really want a lot of rebels and imaginers in our system mhm the rebels okay. are the playful one we don't want the disruptors so much so we're seeing a lot of data we we don't have access to a lot more but as every day passes we're trying to get Uh, more people to take their profiles uh could these flows be exercised aspirationally okay so shailo is asking a question yes let me let me start answering some of these questions okay one minute uh, so we have a combination of several flows right mm-hmm. each one can be a combination of several flows for example i know i'm a combination of base harmonizer first floor rebel second floor persister third mm-hmm. floor promoter fifth floor thinker sixth floor rebel Now, just by looking at the structure of my flat, you'll know that okay, I um, the sixth floor imaginer. Sorry, my imaginer floor is the least developed, right? Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. of us have a combination of these floors. One of the questions we got is, could these floors be accessed aspirationally? Yes, we can definitely go into those floors as and when we want to. Mm-hmm. Think about this: if we are not used to being in a particular floor for a long time, we burn a lot of energy trying to be a personality that's not very well developed. let me explain that if my imaginal floor is not very developed in my life then i don't consciously go into that personality type all the time or very often i can only be there briefly and i tend to come back to my base floor or the floors that are much more developed more often because that's where i feel most comfortable right yeah the yeah the higher we go the higher we go in our floors the more battery it starts burning okay yeah? mm-hmm. so the uh- answer is basically what we can do to build a fantastic personality is to go into those flows a lot more try and see if we can spend more time there too easier said than done of course okay yeah right yeah. so i got another question uh, rather a statement from chandrashekar so basically during the lockdown period we need to understand the personality types of our family and provide for their psychological needs to be met yes uh, let me tie this into the second tip that i wanted to give us today the first tip being get your psychological needs met the second tip the being focus use a three prong focus approach yeah mm-hmm. so focus is focus on yourself focus on others and focus on the little like ecosystem or environment you're stuck in or you're in since most of us are staying indoors so when we saying focus 
one get your own needs met first okay uh huh right if if you're a harmonizer or a thinker or a persister or a imaginer or a promoter or a rebel ensure that you get your needs met right mm-hmm. yeah. now if there's no one else around you to get your needs then find some ways to get your own needs met by yourself okay right so you want to focus on the qualities or think of situations or anecdotes mm-hmm. i mean talk about a list of pleasurable activities that you can do reading a book watching a movie or playing the guitar or doing something that recognizes your own talent and potential focus first part of the focus focus on yourself ensure that you get your psychological needs met first if your mm-hmm. battery is charged really well then you can cater to the needs of other people if you're running on a low battery you're not much use to other people okay so, uh it kind of makes sense i think uh, so let's say for a for a promoter i'm thinking you know they can actually uh, uh cope with the lockdown and stress by keeping them busy doing things and all keeping themselves busy so uh, when it comes to a persisted uh, you said you know they have to be recognized uh, um, recognized for their values and for their efforts so let's say if i'm a persister how can i have my psychological need met so now i mean i know if my partner is a partner is a persister you know probably i could uh um, have his psychological met by appreciating him or having uh, for the work that he's doing around or anything right so but if i am a person sir how can i have my needs met fantastic good question so one of the things we um so sometimes when we meet people even with relationship challenges and we want to do conflict resolution or motivation people motivating uh-huh. people right we tell them one is you learn to ask for your psychological needs to be met okay okay Mm-hmm. Let me answer that through the second tip that I was talking about focus right so the first oh. focus is focus on yourself try to get your needs met for example i will go and ask my wife to give me some battery charges because i'm a harmonizer and say hey tell me i'm a nice guy or tell me some things about me that you like as a person right i will ensure that i have calls with my friends and i'm and i'm hoping some of my childhood friends who are listening here will say oh yeah i bug their lives with constant things about you know getting my needs met right the thing yes. is self awareness is the first step towards self improvement arpita we've got to remember that right most of us are not self aware to the level where we know what to ask for okay okay I'm yeah i'm going to repeat that okay most of us don't know sometimes what we want and therefore we find it hard to verbalize our important needs to the people who love us and mind you the people around us want to give us our needs it's just that they don't know how to give it to us because we don't know how to accept them perfect definitely yeah yeah and that's why we want to use the six flows as a benchmark just as the first topic in the session saying if you know what your psychological needs are then it becomes easy for you to go and say hey i need to know that i'm doing a good job and i have data and structure in my life and give me some tips on how i handle my time really well tell me i do a good job right yeah. you can ask yeah. the people that like you but before that comes focus on self try and get your needs met ask the people The second part of what focus is focus on others in your life, right? Like uh, Chandra Shekhar was saying earlier, ensure that you try and understand the personality types of your family around you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with some practice, and if you are a good listener, you'll slowly start picking up on their language, actions, and behavior because it's so predictable. Yeah, definitely. And try, yeah, and the funny thing about giving compliments in PCM mm-hmm. is. and it this is this is really fantastic because i said pcm is a is a very very broad based methodology but i'm trying to give you the synopsis of those points only in this first session uh dr kala found that even if you fake your praise for someone and if they know that you're faking it for example if you're a persister and i tell mm-hmm. you hey arpita i'm just simply faking this but i'm going to tell you that you are fantastic you are very values driven your opinions are fantastic dr kala found that data wise statistically even if you give a fake compliment to somebody and they know it's fake it still gives them a battery charge okay <clears throat> so what i'm saying is go ahead mm-hmm. and experiment with your family and try all the types of psychological need things that i've given out to you recognition of person recognition of time recognition of you know opinions try a little bit of everything with your family and see which one works for them and then ask them hey did this work for you Okay do you feel better when i give you this kind of compliment or when i talk to you like this it takes a little it takes a little practice and getting used to but eventually we'll get there okay yeah. i know this yeah. is probably a little uh, if people are interested and they want to come back for more sessions bb we could talk a little more 
but for today mm-hmm. we want to stick to those three basic tips saying understand that there are six personality types each personality mm-hmm. type has its own manifestation of actions language behavior and it's very predictable right then yeah. each personality type has one particular psychological need that is more important than anything else imagine you have six chargers for your phone but there's one charger that super charges your phone really really well right yeah. yes yes so yes so your psychological need is like is a super charger right you want to pay attention to that uh, yeah three tips like we said is one get your psychological needs met every day especially mm-hmm. in the lockdown phase ensure that whatever your type is ensure that you get your psychological needs met how use focus use a three pronged approach one focus on yourself give yourself the compliments and the appreciation you need give yourself the time you need to do the activities that you like to do right mm-hmm. so okay. read a book or watch a movie or talk to people do a little bit of everything which is the third tip that we said right so mm-hmm. you want to get a little exercise in you want to do something exciting you want to do something playful you want to do something with other people you want to play some games uh yeah. thinkers thinkers will like to have a routine the best tip that we found that is um, applicable to all six types especially in covid time is focus and consistency right mm-hmm. what do you want to focus on and what are you trying to be consistent every day with right okay. if you focus yeah. on the right thing so have three or four important things that you want to do every day and be consistent manani yeah. ஒரிய <laughs> <laughs> something to become a habit it has to be repeated and it has to be performed consistently over a period of time so get your psychological needs met use a three pronged approach to focus do something for yourself do something mm-hmm. with others in your family and then also take care of the little ecosystem you are in you know take a walk in your house clean up the place um, do a little things around the house so that way you are also focusing on the environment you live in right yeah. yeah so yeah honor, honor the environment honor the place that you're living in you know your life i'm not saying keep it clean i'm just saying honor it right yeah for example yeah. i have a guitar we have musical instruments so my uh, i mean i'll go play my guitar or the kids will join in we'll sing some songs and then we'll play something my kids were busy uh, setting up dominoes all over the house today right so the environment also is being part of their entire process and Quite honestly my two boys 9 and 6 haven't really reacted to the lockdown as much as we thought they they would you know they're pretty okay they're getting their mm-hmm. psychological needs met every day at 6 o'clock we go on the terrace and we spend an hour or 45 minutes you know in cardio and playing and running around um and in doing that they're meeting my needs right yeah. my needs for playful contact and my needs for time alone with my family and all of that so ensure that you're getting your needs met with yourself with others and also honor the environment and do some things in the space you're living in right true true and that's yeah that's why saying the third tip being do a little bit of everything you know health wise physically mentally emotionally and if spiritually matters to you then do that too read the kind of books that stimulate your thinking watch a good movie get some physical mm-hmm. exercise have meaningful conversations with your partners or spouses or people in the house put away some electronic stimulation for an hour or two in a day you know uh if you have a terrace or if you have some place where you can reflect do some meditation if that is not your thing then you know call your friends and crack jokes you know um we have we have some amazing rebel kids and i remember i was coaching one of my clients and i asked him to write a short story mm-hmm. right? because i see this guy is a bundless amount of energy and he does not know what to do with it so i said hey you know what why don't you think of some characters and write a short story and give it to me and it doesn't matter if the story is good or not right the point is you want to find meaningful pursuits so one of the things i would do is if i were you i'd write down a list of things that i like doing things that i want to do things that i want to explore right mm-hmm. make a list of pleasurable activities you want to do in the day right yeah. i've got a big list guys if you want if you want a list of pleasurable activities and things that you can do from a psychological point of view uh, you can get in touch with me after this i think my email address is going to be uh, sent out as a message here you could send me an email and i'll email it to you or if you add my number and whatsapp with your email to me i could send you some information there too so three key things you want to do in the covid thing in this first session you want to say 
understand your personality from the six types that we said. Thinkers look at the world logically. Persisters look at the world through their belief system and opinions. Harmonizers mm -hmm. look at the world through their emotions and feelings. Imaginers look at the world through reflection and silence. Yeah. Promoters look at the world through action and excitement. And rebels look at the world through humor and fun. Right? Right. Now, get a little bit of all of these in your life because all of these are part and parcel of your personality. Some of them are more developed. Some of them are a little less developed than the other floors. But you want to get all of those done. And then we want to focus on those three little things that we want to talk about today. Get your psychological needs met. Focus is a three pronged approach and do a little bit of everything in your life. Okay? Yeah. Make a list of pleasurable activities and do that. You can fill that in. Um, mm -hmm. Let me reiterate the psychological needs one more time. Thinkers like to be recognized for the work they do and their commitment to their time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The sisters like to be recognized for the work they do and their value system and their convictions and their beliefs. Right? Harmonizers want to be recognized for the person they are. So you recognize the person. And they also like sensorial information, you know. Uh, everything should be nice. Sound, smell. And that's why some people like, you know, sweet smelling homes. Everything should look pleasant, decent, all of that. So harmonizers like that. Imaginers like silence. So you want to give them the gift of solitude. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, promoters like excitement. So they need to be excited, stimulated. So they want to do puzzles or you know, create some little adventure sport for yourself in the house. Like Ant-Man, you know, in the movie Ant-Man, he mm -hmm. builds this whole little thing for his daughter and himself. You know, promoters are fantastic that way. Ant-Man is a good example of a harmonizer, by the way. Yeah, he gets the whole feelings and all of that in the movie, right? Um, and the Rebel Flows, you like humor and fun. So fill your life with playful contact with the people. Call friends, talk, uh, read a lot of funny stuff, or laugh aloud, laugh out aloud a lot with your friends. Get on video chats, do something funny, right? You want to do that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Question times, please. If you have, I'm looking at one. Harini is asking, can you make an effort or work on your weakest level because you admire or want to be that? Yes, you can. It's not going to be easy because if it's a floor that's not very well developed, then you're going to you're going to drain your battery being there. But like we said, a habit is a repeated process performed consistently over a period of time. And if you go into that floor and stay there and try to manifest those behaviors, over time, you will expand and grow in that floor. So yes, you can definitely improve all the floors that you can, intentionally or like, is it so, hierarchical? Sorry, I'm just looking at some questions. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'd like to ask one question here, Ron. Uh, what about distress patterns? How do we identify uh, these patterns in ourselves or... Uh, people at home and, you know, to help us deal with the lockdown. See, um, distress is, at least distress using PCM as the base will mm -hmm. probably need another complete session in itself. Okay, okay. Right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going there, but um, let me tell you, even distress, Dr. Kala found that even distress is extremely predictable according to the type of personality you are. And that's okay. why... And mm -hmm. that's why it's still used in process therapy as a clinical psychological tool. And that's why people like me who are cognitive behavior therapists or rational emotive behavior therapists, I use the PCM as a fantastic complementary and supplementary information guide because it's easy for me to predict people's distress patterns. It's very, very predictable, right? Just to excite you for all those, uh, just to hope that you join us in our next session, each personality type has only three distress patterns. And if you know which one you are in at that moment, you can easily get out of your distress pattern by yourself or you can use others or the environment to help you get out of distress patterns really, really quickly. But like I said, I, I think we should leave that for another conversation because that's Definitely. too much information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. So... Uh, I'm just reading... I'm just reading... Uh, okay, my, my mother-in-law has... <laughs> something very nice to say appreciate your in-depth study appreciate you as a person thank you mother-in-law that is nice mm -hmm. my mother-in-law is a harmonizer so arpita why don't you say something nice to my mother-in-law meet her psychological needs if she's a harmonizer her psychological needs are to recognize her as a person no i'm trying to find that question uh... it's in one of those things there so even oh. if you haven't met somebody see this is a good exercise okay even if uh -huh. you haven't met someone and if i'm telling uh -huh. you somebody's a harmonizer and their needs are to be recognized as a person what could you possibly say to somebody like me? 
you can say hey auntie i imagine you are uh am i audible yes you are okay <laughs> i don't know i'm really lost here so we have to get started okay if somebody's a harmonizer and their personality psychological need is to be recognized as a nice person yeah uh -huh. even without knowing them you can say i can imagine that if ron is saying you're a harmonizer that means you're kind and compassionate and sensitive as a person you put people's needs before yours you're always taking care of the house you're always taking care of the family you know you're very loving as a person and i can imagine this whole typical telugu mother figure in that house the telugu movies mother figure right not to not yes to, yes yes a typical mom kind of figure and there you are so you just did a good job without meeting my mother in law you just gave her a good compliment <laughs> i'm sure if she's listening now she's going to tell me later that she had tears in her eyes and she is like oh my god why did you have to bring my name up in this conversation <laughs> Right. So even if you can, any questions, guys? I know. Are we good for time, or did we? Uh, um, I think we started a bit late, but yeah, it's up to you, Ron. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Now. Uh, okay. We. We'll would you like to take more questions, or would you like to sum it up and? So I think we could take a few more questions or some. We could read some input for another five ten minutes, considering we started late. We yeah. We have a few participants here, so I I appreciate people giving us their time. Yeah. So Ron, uh, in the meantime, while people send questions, can you just uh, tell us a few, you know, a few basic tips? Uh, no. Yeah. So Ron, Instagram uh, can allows us to do this live sessions for an hour, and uh, beyond one hour, it automatically gets disconnected. So that's the reason the session ended. Uh, no so yeah, before we uh, before it got disconnected, you know, you I asked you if you could give us a little examples of uh, you know tiny small things that people could do to make themselves happy. You know, like a harmonizer for a harmonizer, a good smelling house would do the trick. uh for a for a thinker uh, you know like appreciating uh, maybe you know if, uh, my this the other person in my house is a thinker giving respect to their uh, uh i don't know how to put it you know like their uh, schedule to use respect their time their, and schedule yes yeah yes. respecting their schedule might do the trick right? so yeah okay somebody's got a question okay so yes so one of the things you want to do is um, remember we spoke about getting your psychological needs met right yeah yeah uh, the funny thing about this six types of personality is we generally do the things depending on our personality so if you see a house that has a thinker there are lots of things that are already going to be very structured because that's how they live their life okay right mm -hmm. your psychological getting your psychological needs met that's why we said use the three prong focus approach you know focus on yourself mm -hmm. focus on others focus on that and then get a little bit of everything done in your life you know health wise wealth wise a little bit i think what we can do is uh, if people are interested we could we could do a deep dive into distress and talk more about tcm in another session sometime soon okay uh huh yeah? considering we we told them we're going to keep it short we, we started late but um, i think for a good start i think it was a good sir ha it was a good first session and i think we we got most of the information that we wanted to send out saying that yes. okay, there are six types of personalities trust me we just scratch the surface <laughs> that's good and i i hope we've been able to uh, at least help uh, our viewers yeah. in identifying uh, their personality types and like you said you know being aware is the key being right. aware and communicating so uh I think mental health is underrated beyond anything in this world. So I think it's like the least prioritized thing. So what advice do you have for people to stay mentally drawn? You know, a generic advice, irrespective of their base floor or base personality type. Right. Like I said, focus and consistency, Arpita. Focus yeah, and consistency. You want, yeah, you want focus on get a few things that you want to do every day. You know, get a little bit of everything every day. Again, I'm going back to, and that's why I said. the three little secrets i want people to walk away today is get your psychological needs met mm -hmm. focus is a three pronged approach and do a little bit of everything in your life have a lot of fun things and things that you want to do if you're a thinker 
for example if you had to talk in to more detail if you're a thinker you already have your time pretty well sorted you know and one yeah. of the biggest challenges we have with thinkers is they have everything really sorted out in their heads or in their time and mm-hmm. they they don't like distractions to that rule so one of the things you could do is only plan for 50% of your day and leave the rest of the day free true true right to do what you want right mm-hmm. harmonize or rebels for example don't plan for anything and they're just going with the flow and it will help the rebels to actually put a plan in place and say okay i want to do these five things today and let me see if i can get done and that's why i said put a list of fun pleasurable activities or exercises that you want to do with yourself do a little bit of everything yeah get the needs met focus and get a little bit of done little everything done sorry go ahead so it, it i think it helps to have an excel sheet because harini recently got us started with an activity uh, so she made us all uh, have an excel sheet uh with five things that we are supposed to do for 5 minutes every day so it could be anything you know like reading a book writing working out so five things that we're doing for ourselves and we have to log it log it in an excel sheet so okay, but don't listen to her in okay Arita? this is me <laughs> being in my rebel floor harini is crazy don't listen to her okay no but i harini, think it it is it, on instagram <laughs> yeah i think it's definitely doing an amazing uh uh help i should say because you know uh, just because i have i'm answerable to harini i have to tell her okay harini i read for 10 minutes today i'm actually picking up a book and reading the uh, reading books that i wanted to but i couldn't so if I, you think about this if you think about this there are only two things that we can spend in the world time and money right yeah 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 so we keep money out of the equation now and i know it's tough times and that is that in itself money conversation is another whole conversation in itself right yes yes and if yes. you if you look at your time in your life irrespective of what personality you are and if you have focus on what you want to do with your time in the day and if you are consistent most of your challenges are met if you're a normal sane person i hope that yeah. makes sense no right? definitely so definitely and I, and i keep telling this to all the people i know hey figure out a few things that you want to do with your time so have a little bit of everything in there you know spend time with your family and that's why focus is a three pronged approach focus on yourself do things for yourself do things with your with your parents or your spouses or your children i said spouses yeah. because i mean both sides not many yeah. right and do thing with the environment too mm-hmm. have a little bit of everything that you can do during the day mm-hmm. so that way you know you have some of your needs met true true and i think you know having an excel sheet is actually you know it it make it ensures you that you do it so uh, this you're is just, from my you're just saying that because harini is back online and you saw her coming in you're just saying that harini <laughs> harini no, 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 gives no, no, no. an excel sheet <laughs> okay <laughs> great guys if there are any other questions you can post them or you have my email id i'd love to hear from you for so, those who'd like to you know to find out more about the pcm i could send some literature too and okay. otherwise um if you'd like us to talk a little more get in touch with sisney send out your questions to them or me and we'll try and see if we can put together more information on topics related to psychology yeah so just like ron had mentioned guys uh, this is the first in the series that we plan to do and we definitely want to uh, dive deeper into pcm and personality type so uh, keep following us do stay in touch I am actually sharing Ron's email ID and phone number in case if you want to get in touch with him directly uh and feel free to send in your questions yeah you can actually direct message Ron or Sisney or you can email Ron and uh, yeah keep following us keep sending in your suggestions or what do you want to hear more about Thank you so much I'm going to say again three things you want to do in this moment of lockdown get your needs met focus is a three pronged approach focus on yourself others and the environment and do a little bit of everything with your time so focus and consistency with your time make a list of activities that you want to do okay yeah stay indoors stay safe stay happy thank you Arun. thank you so much ron we really appreciate you taking so much time out of your schedule to spend uh, uh, you know this time with us answering our questions and giving us uh, these much needed insights actually yeah so i'm sure uh, uh, everybody uh, you know will follow all these and i'm definitely sure that it's going to be helpful for you in dealing stress during these traumatic times yeah and stay in touch stay safe bye bye thanks guys thank you bye okay yeah bye ron hello so i've shared ron